So the last time around on our basic tune-up series, we covered the timing marks and you know the stuff to do before you get started. So this time around, we're going to get into spark plugs. You know, it's like the universal thing that all gasoline internal combustion engines have in common. And for the context of what we're doing here, we're talking about just doing a tune-up on a standard car. We'll talk about some of the, the variables and some of the things that you know uh, uh, go outside of that, but only so you understand terms that you're going to come across as you're reading about this stuff. So. First things first, right? Um, a lot of guys like to take the spark plugs out one at a time, you know, and, and change them one at a time. I don't like to do that. I like to take them all out at the same time and lay them out in order. Lay them out in the order that they came out of the engine. So these are the plugs in this bank. So it was two, four, six, and eight. And by doing this, you can assess the running condition of the engine and if there are any isolated problems in any of the cylinders. And now we're going to talk about this at the end of the video. Before we do that, I want to get I want to cover some terms and some things that you guys may or may not be familiar with and how they apply in this situation. So the first is this. There are an uncountable number of variations of spark plugs. If you're doing a basic tune-up for, for the for the vast majority of, of applications just go with what the book calls for. Unless the car is completely modified, unless you've got you know different intake, cam, headers, the whole bit, uh, heads, compression ratio, just stick with what the manufacturer recommends, regardless of which brand you use. Now, brands, um, because right away, because I'm gonna, I see it already in the comments, it's like, so what spark plug should I use? Here's my experience, right? Auto lights are the toughest spark plugs. Uh, we used to use them in, in the nitro cars because that's the only thing that would live. Uh, NGKs are the most forgiving spark plugs. Uh, you can get them dirty, they'll clean up, you know, they're good plugs. Uh, Champions are the most unforgiving plugs, they're the most fragile plugs. Once you get them dirty, they never clean up. So let's just say you flood the engine, you know, you go to start it, pump it a couple of times, doesn't start right away. If you foul those plugs, they don't come back. So that's, that's my personal experience, yours may vary. Do your homework. Now, as far as like all of the different types of plugs, you know, resistor plug, copper core, iridium, then you've got the trick plugs that have the multiple ground straps and, and whatnot. Um, go with the type of plug that's recommended. As far as the trick plugs go, with you know, with, with like system, the multiple ground straps and all sorts of different, I've tried them all, right? I haven't found any any differences. There is the, the people constantly try to reinvent the wheel. If it worked, it would be included from the factory, the way the manufacturer, you know, set them up. So, as far as working with the plugs, uh, gapping them. So, a lot of you guys, you, you're just learning this, right? So, the gap of the spark plug is simply the distance between the center electrode, so here's the ceramic, here's the center electrode, and here's the ground strap. And the gap of the plug is simply the distance between the center electrode and the ground strap. And the way you set that, you can use a feeler gauge, or you can get yourself a wire spark plug tool like this. Uh, in this case, this car calls for a 35 thousandths of an inch gap. So here's your wire of 35 thousandths. And all you're going to do is pass it through here. And this is just a little bit loose. This is more like a, a 38 to 40 thousandths of an inch gap. This part of the tool right here is used to close or you know open or close but basically the, to bend the ground strap. So I bent it a little bit. Okay, and there we go. 35 thousandths of an inch. And that is how you gap a spark plug. Now you're gonna hear a couple of different terms associated with spark plugs. Um, and I'll explain I'll explain them in order. Right? The most common is heat range. What heat range should I use my spark plug? You know, what heat range spark plug should I use in my engine? Heat range is the ability of this section of the plug, the center electrode and the ceramic, to dissipate heat. Okay? As a rule of thumb, the hotter the engine, meaning the higher the compression ratio, the higher the cylinder pressure, the colder the, spl the plug you want to use. What happens is if this stays, if this is too hot, it becomes a glow plug and it'll light the engine off like a diesel. You'll get pre-ignition out of that. You'll get detonation, all sorts of nasty stuff. 
Uh, if you're just doing a tune-up, go with the heat range that's rec on a stock car. Just go with the heat range that's recommended from the manufacturer. Uh, as as uh, best way to explain heat range, you know, and 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 uh, and and when you would change it, if you raise the compression ratio, let's just say from eight to one to nine to one, you'll want to go down heat range in the spark plugs. And different manufacturers rate their plugs in different ways, so you're going to have to do your homework on that. What you're going to, you know, how you're going to do that. Uh, now talking about gapping the plugs, uh, you'll hear the term side gapping come up a lot. And Side gapping is attained one of two ways. Either the ground strap is cut back so that the spark is going to jump diagonally from the center, from the center electrode to the ground strap, or some guys will uh, take the ground strap and just bend it off to the side slightly. And what you're doing there is you're unshrouding the spark. This is good and it's bad. It's, it's good because obviously you want the spark as open to the combustion chamber as you can get it, but it's bad because manufacturers leave the ground strap long like this because it acts as a bit of a shield, like an umbrella, uh, over this part of the plug. And this is the most sensitive part of the plug, that area between the center electrode and the ceramic. When fuel gets in there, what will happen is the spark will want to jump the fuel as opposed to jumping this gap over here. So that's one of the reasons why you may not want to side gap the plugs even if you do, uh, even if you can I should say. It's good at best for like a horsepower or two. The other thing here in terms of is indexing and for our purposes you're not going to index, index any spark plugs. Uh, you index a spark plug in order to shield the center electrode and the ground strap from a cold mixture, the cold wet mixture is coming in through the intake. This is important, uh, let's say, on an engine that uh, has a lot of overlap, you're blowing a lot of mixture through and it's all washing over the spark plug. So you would position, by indexing it, you would position the ground strap so that the ground strap is shielding this section of the plug from that mixture. Uh, different engines would require, obviously, different configurations of combustion chambers would require this to be positioned in different ways to achieve the same result. Um, but if you were to index it, what you would do is you would make a line on the spark plug, right, from the ground strap up here on the ceramic, and then you would position the plug in such a way so that you would achieve that. Um, and they make different thickness washers, you know, if you do want to attempt this, they make different thickness washers so that you can tighten the plug into it and have that line where you want it to be. Uh, the only place where I found this to be really effective is in engines like uh, Hemi's, where the plug is centrally located between the valves, directly between the valves, so during that period of overlap it's getting washed. So that's important. Uh, to know. Not important to do necessarily, but important to know. And the other thing while we're talking about washers is a lot of spark plugs, most spark plugs you'll see, have a washer like this. This is a crush washer. And they put these here because you don't want to use a lot, you don't want to, you don't want, you don't want to tighten a spark plug, right? Spark plugs should be, should be put in just cute, you know, just beyond, right? Uh, and that crush washer keeps the spark plug from, from unscrewing itself. Uh, there's a, a lot of debate how is the crush washer supposed to go. So the crush washer, when you put it on, the curved part of the crush washer faces the, the cylinder head and the flat part of the crush washer faces the spark plug. So when don't you use the crush washer? When you've got an engine that uses spark plug tubes, or drool tubes, as these are called in the slant 6, um, or Mopars, slants have them, Hemis have them, lots of different like engines have spark plug tubes. When you've got something like this, leave the washer out, because the washer will eat through the bottom of it and, and tear all that up. So the, the drool tube actually becomes the crush washer. And now one other thing, if you're dealing with a, uh, if you're dealing with a, a, an aluminum cylinder head, you're going to want to use anti-seize on the threads. So the reason you want you want to do that is because as the engine is running, you know, uh, heating, cooling cycles, you'll get moisture condensation get up there between the threads, 
between the plug and the uh, and the aluminum cylinder head, and it, the aluminum will oxidize, it will grab onto those threads, and when you go to unscrew it, she's not going to want to come. So you want to put just a tiny, tiny bit of anti-seize on the threads. And the, the, the rule that I've always you know, used is just take a little tiny dab, keep it in, in line with the, the ground strap, and just put a little dab on the first two or three threads. Tiny bit. Because as it runs, that anti-seize, once it gets hot, that anti-seize is going to want to migrate down into this part of the plug, and it'll actually, the anti-seize conducts electricity, so you'll start shorting the plug to the anti-seize, and the, 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 the spark will jump this way instead of this way. And it's not a consistent spark, and it's an exposed spark, so it gets blown out really easily. Um, I think that's all I wanted to talk about with that. Um, yeah, we'll do a we'll do a video on on the specific the specifics of tuning and selecting and tuning high performance plugs somewhere down the road. But for right now, let's just stick with the basics and the stock stuff. So we took our plugs out, and we seated. All four of these plugs are fat, okay? By fat meaning, you know, there's way too much fuel being introduced into this engine. The reason why you want to pull them out and keep them in order is because they may not all be even. You may find that this cylinder here has uh, uh, oil on it or it may be running fat for whatever reason. Um, you may find that one of them is ashy or very light. Uh, there, there's all different things that will give you different circumstances on an engine, but by laying them out this way, you know the balance of the engine, what's working and what's not. Generally speaking, if you find one plug that's a little dark, that's discolored, it's generally a bad plug wire, or let's say a, a, a cap that's, that's, that's got a small crack in it and it's not providing sufficient voltage to that plug, so they never clean themselves up. In this case, we have all four that are fat. So we have to look at what could be causing this. So in this case, the, the, the answer was pretty obvious. We check the spark uh, at the coil, and then we check the spark at the end of the, uh, the wires, and we found that it's got a good, sharp spark. So we know that that's not an issue. So the next thing would be the carburetor. Now we know that this car doesn't have any issues as far as running. It doesn't flood over the carburetor. Uh, once it warms up, it runs fine. But what we found here is that the choke pull-off isn't adjusted correctly. Remember, the choke is spring-loaded to be closed right, by the thermostat right here. When you first start the engine and the, the, the spring is holding the butterfly closed, this part right here, the, the pull-off, is supposed to open that butterfly a little bit more than it is. It should be open to about this position here, but it's only opening it that much, which means that it's seeing a, complete, a very over-rich mixture. We also found, while we were looking at this, that the <laughs> phone is ringing, but we're going to ignore that. The link between the butterfly and the throttle linkage that controls the fast idle cam is missing on this engine. So essentially, when, you, when you're starting this engine up, it's not getting sufficient airflow through the choke, and it's not getting a high idle. And those two things will cause the engine to run extremely rich. This engine only really sees very short trips. He'll start it up, he'll drive it a mile or two, and then shut it off. So those plugs never get a chance to clean themselves up. If we had taken this car, let's say, and run out, you know, five, ten miles on the interstate, and once it's fully warmed up, those plugs probably wouldn't look like that. So. It's, 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 a, it's a good practice to pull the plugs after the car has been put through its paces. Fortunately for us, we pulled it when it, when it was cold and, or, or when it hadn't been put through those paces, so we got to find this issue right here. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much it. What we're going to do now is just, just gap a fresh set of plugs, throw them in there, and uh, fix the issues with the carburetor. But the next time around here, we're going to talk about the spark plugs, or uh, the plug wires, the, uh, the, the cap, the rotor, the points, all of that. And we're going to cover that part of the, uh, the, the tune-up next. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that, and I'll see you tomorrow.